Welcome to Sheboygan County Government, working for you. My name is Adam Payne, County Administrator and co-host of this program with Chairman Roger Destrudy. And today, as we do every month, we're pleased to have a very special guest with us, a department head and a seasoned veteran with <laughs> Sheboygan County, our County Clerk, Julie Glancy. Welcome, Julie. Thank you. Julie has, and when I say seasoned veteran, I say that with the utmost respect because I've been here 14 years now. Julie's been here longer than that, and she's always been an individual that I know I can go to and seek help and assistance and guidance, and it's just been a pleasure working with Julie all these years. And as you may know, and we'll talk about a little bit more toward the end of this program, Julie, as our county clerk, has announced her retirement. She's going to be leaving us come January. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's bittersweet for those of us who've had the pleasure of working with Julie. So please begin, Julie, by just sharing a little bit about yourself when you first started working for Sheboygan County, uh, the different positions you've held, and how long you've been our county clerk. Well, uh, I work for Sheboygan County. I started in 1969 with the Clerk of Courts office. I was there for seven years and then I left when my children were little. I worked for Office on Aging for a couple years and I've been in the County Clerk's office for the last 29 years. I've been clerk for 18 and I was in the uh, deputy for 10 and I was here a year before that. So I've got a total of 29. So clearly a go-to person for not only County Board Supervisors, as the key assistant or secretary for the county board, but just a go-to person countywide, whether it's the public or employees. What are the roles and responsibilities of the county clerk's office? What, what, what important well, functions do you have? Statutorily, we're required to do marriage license applications. Uh, we're in charge of the election process for the county. We uh, have to do uh, domestic partnerships, and we're the secretary for the county board. And we're pretty much an official record keeper for the county, so a lot of records that don't have a home anywhere else are filed in our office. And when you say secretary to the county board, which is kind of an old term, mm -hmm. you know, it's, it's administrative assistant nowadays, or, but what does that mean? What does that all well, encompass? Well, we're the official record keeper for the board, so we have all of their agendas and minutes and documents on file in our office. We are the person who takes the minutes for the county board meetings and posts the agendas for the meetings. We also, uh, our office does the minutes and agendas for the finance committee, but we are responsible for making sure that the minutes and agendas for all county committees are posted on the county website. Important task, kind of a behind the scenes leadership responsibility, but if those minutes and agendas don't get posted correctly or don't get handled correctly, folks like Chairman Testrudi and others aren't happy. Well, and it's also, you know, the law requires agendas to be posted within a certain time period before meetings. So if we miss those deadlines and don't get them posted, then the meetings can't be held, which is problematic. So some of your roles and responsibilities statutorily required and then others, and you touched on a few, aren't required by state statute, but you have initiated or the county board has initiated. Touch on a few of the discretionary programs. Uh, we do conservation licenses, and that's really pretty much a throwback to... Uh, years and years ago when conservation licenses were done on paper and at that time the county clerks were the distribution centers for the state in their counties and we would get cases of you know conservation licenses from the state we get them out to the fleet farms and bait shops and stuff like that and mm -hmm. dealt with all the accounting and of course that's not necessary anymore but our issuing of, of conservation licenses kind of stem from that historical involvement in conservation we do um, the registration of snowmobiles and things like that as well. We issue passports, or not issue, but process their applications. Our office is also the in charge of the phone system for Sheboygan County and the property and liability insurance for the county. And if you didn't catch all that, particularly the conservation licenses and the passports, I've taken advantage of, of both those opportunities and having bought my license, my hunting and fishing license at the fleet farm for years mm -hmm. or the DNR station, both would do a good job, but rarely do you have to wait in a long line when you go to the county clerk's office. We have good people there who can assist you with that and the passports as well. I always find that you can very efficiently assist people. Well, and you know, we have, you know, there's four people including myself in my office and when you go for a passport at the post office, they have maybe one person who handles that. You know, and I think because most people think of Fleet Farm for their for their conservation license and the post office for passports, you know, we don't a lot of people don't realize they can come here, so we don't right. have the probably the turnover or the number of people that exactly. are involved as well. So well, we can be a little bit there. better. Yeah. yeah, a little so bit quicker service. If you watch this service. program, now you know. Now you know. Now you know, now you know. And, and you'll get us. some helpful assistance and get in and out real quickly. 
Um, so you just mentioned four staff. Uh, what's your total operating budget annually? Our general operating budget is about $142,000 a year. Uh, we, um, in election years like this, our budget will go up anywhere from forty dollars to $45,000. This year with the recall elections we've had, we're probably looking at about a $60,000 increase from our regular operating budget. So one hundred and forty to do, to over two hundred thousand, depending on on what the elections on do. what the elections do, and a lot of discussion about the elections. And I know Chairman Distrudi is going to touch on that more in a moment. But you know the time that it takes. I think county clerks across the state really deserve a pat on the back for stepping up, particularly this year with the recall elections and all the assistance you provide. Just personally in your experience you know how has that evolved over the years and and what happened this year how were you able to manage it well you know when I started Sheboygan County had uh, the lever machines in the city and everybody you know in the cities and in everybody else had paper ballots elections were pretty much a snap you know there wasn't a whole lot you know involved now it has become you know it has just exploded in terms of the amount of work we have to do the statewide voter registration system has added a huge amount of work the electronic voting equipment is is another huge impact and there's just been you know more and more paperwork that has to be done and more and more security issues you know everything has to be sealed and locked and tracked and you know so it's become a real you know kind of administrative nightmare it seems like rather than getting easier it's becoming more burdensome absolutely for staff, which, absolutely which in a time of worse every year right Right, it, it's, it's counterintuitive though. We're all trying to streamline and gain efficiencies and mm -hmm. hold costs down, yet county clerks in particular are being asked to do more and more, more complicated information or, or systems to work with and it takes a higher level of expertise. Absolutely. Um, finally, before I turn it over to Roger, what do you see as the most challenging responsibilities that the county clerk has to contend with? You've just touched on a number yeah, of areas. And elections are really the big thing right, right now. It's right up there. It really is. You know, especially this year with the presidential election, there's so much, you know, so many people interested in it and so much, you know, people that vote once every four years and, and have difficulty knowing what they need to do, you know, they all seem to find their way to call our office or, you know, Right. look for ways to what they need to do. Excellent. So. Thank you, Julie. Roger. Well, thank you, Julie, for uh, your years of uh, work in the clerk's office. And uh, a lot of people don't uh, really appreciate all the work you do with the local municipal clerks. Most of them are part time and they, they're not uh, really attuned to all the laws. And you help coordinate that and uh, much appreciated from all the uh, local governments. And uh, the election day is coming soon. What are the uh, what offices are on the, the November 6th ballot? Well, in addition to president, you have the federal leg legislators, you have the state senate and the representative to the Congress. There are all the state assemblymen are on the ballot. And because this <coughs> is a presidential year, the even numbered state senators are on the ballot. So for Sheboygan County, that's Senate 20. That's about you know, maybe a third of Sheboygan County. Uh, on the local level, we have, or I shouldn't say local, but county level, we have district attorney, county clerk, register of deeds, and treasurer. We also have two municipalities and a school district that have referendum on this ballot. And is there anything uh, new people should know for this, this election in particular? Um, yeah, there's really a lot of new. First of all, what most people will probably notice is straight party is no longer on the ballot. Years ago, you used to be able to go in and pick your party and give every candidate in that party a vote. And that was huge. Um, Two years ago, it was represented almost 40% of the voters voted straight party. And the legislature has chosen to eliminate that in this year. So there is no straight party on the ballot. You need to vote for every candidate on the ballot or every office on the ballot. And there's a little bit of concern because what happens with this particular election is there's so much interest in the top ticket on the ballot for president. A lot of people will come in and vote for president and then the rest of the ticket stays blank. So there's a, a tremendous amount of drop off when you get towards the bottom of the ticket. And there are a lot of contested races, including the one for county clerk and register of deeds, that if people don't continue on down and vote for the entire t ballot, you know, it will make an impact on the outcome of those elections. So there's concern about that. There's also a tremendous amount of changes in absentee rules that the legislature has passed. Uh, one of them is that in-person absentee balloting can't start until October 22nd. 
the clerks have all had their ballots since September 20th. But if you walk into their office and ask for to vote absentee, they have to mail you your ballot until the 22nd of October. I'm not quite sure the understanding behind that legislation, but that is a change. So that makes it a little a little harder for people. And um, absentee balloting is also over a little bit sooner. You can you can cast a ballot in the clerk's office up until the Friday before the election, but the weekend and that Monday before the election, no one can vote absentee unless you're hospitalized or a sequestered juror. So that's going to be a problem for some people that the day before the election you go, oh my gosh, I have to go out of town, you're not going to be able to vote. And so that's a change that might, you know, some people might find difficult to deal and, with. And Roger, I think this last minute and a half of discussion is an example of just how complicated it has become with our elections, not only in the technology and the new systems and everything that Julie has had to contend with, Julie and her staff and, and the municipal clerks, but just her explanation about early voting and who can and who can't and how. Uh, I've heard her give this explanation four or five times. Julie can very confidently share it. But my bet is if you polled 80% of our viewers or better right now, they go, huh? You know, it, it, it's, it's challenging to understand all these rules. So again, if you don't know or you didn't catch that, don't hesitate to contact the county clerk's Absolutely. office and they'll walk you through it. And we sure appreciate having people there who do understand it. And, and for those of us who vote uh, at the, uh, at the uh, and in the polling places, we used to have different times that were available throughout the county. We made that uniform. What are the times uh, that the polling you places can, are open? Okay, the polls all open at 7 in the morning and they all close at 8 o'clock at night. So they're open for 13 hours. So, you know, they should be, most people should be able to, to manage to come in during those periods right. of time. Fortunately, that's still simple. That's, that's <laughs> probably the simplest part is you can go there and vote, yes. And I understand the Government Accountability Board has a new website. Uh, what kind of information does that have? It is the My Vote website, and it's myvote.wi.gov. It is a very, it's a very nice website. It's very intuitive. It allows voters to check to see if they're registered. It allows them to um, look to see what's on the ballot, and they can also fill out a voter registration form and an absentee ballot request right on that on that site. They do have to still mail them in. They can't, you know, just print it and assume they're done, but. Uh, it does give them that opportunity. If you are in the military, you can actually print a ballot from that system and mail it in. So that's particularly helpful to our servicemen who are overseas because it's very difficult sometimes to get a ballot mailed to them or whatever. That way if they have access to a computer, they can print it, they can mail it in and, and their ballot will be counted. So, you know, it does have some good things. It is a little bit of a challenge for uh, the clerks though because if you register, or you request an absentee ballot through it, it always sends you all these emails. So we're all getting, you know, dozens of emails from the system alerting us to people that have downloaded forms so we can watch for them in the mail. So, would you walk us through uh, a typical election day and um, after we voted, uh, your work has uh, sort of just begun on counting uh, the ballots? Yeah, it is. Um, I, a lot of people will come up to me the day after the election and go, wow, I bet you're glad that's over. And for us, the November election probably won't be over until the second week in December. Um, before the election, we have to get all the supplies ready for the clerks. We do the ballots. And there are 59 reporting units or polling places in Sheboygan County. All of those places need somewhere between 30 and 40 forms that we have to collate for all of them and get out to them so they can use. And of course, that stuff all comes back to us at the end of the night on election day. So when the election is over, the, the poll workers finish up whatever paperwork they need to do. They bring it into our office. And the memory packs from the machines, both the optical scan and the touch screen, uh, are brought in. And we can download those results into our computers. So that's how we tabulate our results election night. Uh, once the election night is over and everything's reported, after that, we have to prepare for the Canvas Board, which is really just a verification of what was reported election night to make sure all that is correct. Another one of the absentee changes recently is that absentee ballots can be accepted up until the Friday after an election. 
as long as they're postmarked by election day. So that has pushed back our board of canvas. We used to meet the Thursday after the election. Now we can't meet until the Tuesday following the election to account for all those late arriving absentees. So those all have to be added into the totals we got on election night. Our numbers are all certified and enter into the state system and then we can certify the county candidates who have won and issue their certificates of election. But because we do the statewide voter registration system for 19 of our municipalities, we then have to enter all the people who registered to vote between the last time and you know election day. And on a presidential, that can be a significant number of people that register at the polls. We also have to enter the voter participation. So every person who votes on election day has to be updated in the system to say that yes, you voted. You know, So when you go out to that state website, you can actually see your voter record and how many times you voted. And until all that kind of stuff is done, it's gonna take us you know, considerable time to finish that. Well, thank you, Julie. You're welcome. So when you hear all that and all that's involved in behind the scenes with elections, Next time you're standing in line waiting to cast your vote and having to be patient, uh, please be patient because it's generally volunteers who are working at the polls. I think they receive a very small compensation yeah, for their time. Yeah, they don't get paid right? a whole lot for it's that. It's not a whole lot and uh, out of the goodness of their hearts, you see a lot of the same people working the polls, so bless their heart. Please be patient and also recognize that there's a lot that they have to learn and understand, and certainly there's a lot that the county clerks and all the municipal clerks are doing to make sure that the elections run smoothly. So uh, I think, if anything, they deserve a little patience and appreciation. Absolutely. And, and when people are frustrated, they usually take it out on the person they're looking at at the time. Right. And that happens to be the poll workers, which is unfortunate because, right. you know. It... I think next election, Julie, we should have all the county board supervisors work the polls. I think the legislators should vote. <laughs> and the our polls. state legislators. Yes, yes. Better I, yet, the state I legislators. I do because you know some idea. of those laws. You know when when people are complaining about the fact that they can't vote in the clerk's office until the twenty second, even though there's a stack of ballots sitting next to the counter. You know those are things that you know. That is a great idea. You know, the legislator. <laughs> you know the legislator should be able to explain to the voters. Right. Right. Very good. Well, moving along or back to another matter that. You mentioned earlier another service that you provide and that's marriage licenses and periodically I'll stop down in your office and it's always kind of a heart warmer to see a young couple or an elderly couple for yeah. that matter all walks of life there getting their marriage license what's that process if someone is going to be married does everyone need to come see the county clerk for a marriage license what's the process uh, yes in, you, in Wisconsin you have to apply in the county that you live in so even if you wanted to get married in Door County or whatever if you lived in Sheboygan County you need to come to Sheboygan County for your marriage license if you live outside of the state of Wisconsin and you want to be married in Wisconsin you apply in the county you're being married in so it's you know it's pretty standard um, when you apply for your license, we need a birth certificate, we need proof that you, where your residence is, we need to know your social security number and where you're getting married, things like that. If you've been married before, we need proof of how that marriage ended. So there's, you know, documentation you need to bring with you. So be prepared. If you're not sure, call yep. ahead. Make sure you're Absolutely. organized. Absolutely. And you need, to have an, you need to know when you're getting married. Every once in a while you have somebody come in and said, well, we're thinking about getting married and we want a license. Well, you need to know when hmm. because a license is only good for 30 days. So we don't want to issue a license to someone whose plans are 40 days out maybe. Uh -huh. And now, you know, it's a non-refundable license and it's $85, you know, it's, okay. you know, when I started, I think it was 20 and I think when I got married, it was 12, but <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, you know, it's, it's not a cheap proposition, right. you know, there's, there's a fee involved and you, we want to make sure that if they get a license, they can use it, you know. So 30 days, I, I didn't know that. So 30 days prior to getting married. No, nope, 30 days, it will expire. It will expire in 30 yeah. days. So, so you have to apply at right. least six days before you're planning to get married, but not more than 30 days. Uh, not more than 30. And is this, is the marriage license a statutory uh, requirement that you have to have yes. a marriage license? In order to be married, you need a marriage license. Because I'm sure some people might hurt $85 to, just so I can tie the knot. That doesn't seem right, but that's... A yeah, state requirement. That's a state requirement. It's actually illegal to marry someone without a license. So. So have you had a couple in front of you already that, you know, you started going through what this marriage license is all about, and they decided, I don't know if I'm going to go forward <laughs> with it. 
Uh, no, I, they usually are there when they're going to do it, but we do have people that will walk in once in a while and want to pick up a license and they just, you know, you can't do that. You have to come in and apply yeah, in person. At that time so. frame. And about how many marriage licenses do you process a year? You know, the last couple of years it's been down. Before that we had about 750 a year. The last two years it's only been about 620. So it's really, you know, I don't know if that's a change in the population or just a, a change in how people operate, but right. um, it has been down. And now there's also domestic marriage license, is that correct? Well, it's or a domestic partnership. Partnership. It's similar to a marriage license, but um, it isn't, there's no officiant, like when you get married you have, you know, a, a minister or a court commissioner perform the wedding for a domestic partnership. It's simply a notarized document. Okay. And, um, and the point of having that is? It, it gives them a few additional um, rights in terms of decisions and end-of-life decisions and things like that. Okay. It, it doesn't have a, a lot of value. It doesn't have know, the same standing, it, as, standing a as a marriage license. Standing as a marriage license, but it's a license, document it to is, show they're yeah. a, par a partnership. Right. Understood. Okay. And then, of course, right next upstairs from you is the Register of Deeds, mm -hmm. and that's where ultimately their marriage license will be recorded. Yes. And if they need to get their birth certificate, that's right upstairs as well. Yes. Very good. So as you look back and reflect, <laughs> on your years as county clerk and, and working for Sheboygan County and, and getting married here and raising your family here. And I know you've had a, a wonderful life, at least from my point of view. <laughs> I think the one thing about Julie that hasn't changed, Roger, 14 years I've been here, I know you've been longer. Mm -hmm. One thing that hasn't changed is you look at her and I think she looks the <laughs> same as she did 14 years ago. Very I've kidded so. her about this before. I think Julie knows where the Fountain of Youth is. <laughs> and if you don't know or you want to find out, talk to Julie. But honestly, she, she's just always maintained a professional, youthful, outgoing yeah. uh, disposition. And I compliment you for that. So as you reflect I'll on your years, oh, okay. what, what's changed the most? What, what, do you, what do you think about that really has changed the most significantly? I think it's just technology. Because when I think about when I started in the county clerk's office, we did not have a computer in our office. There were no computers at all. I mean, the county had mainframes that they dealt with, but there were no personal computers for departments. And I think after I was there about a year or two, we got one, and we had five people in the office at that time, and there was one computer that you could use. And, you know, when I think back on the processes and the things we did, county board, for example, we would type out on these big docket pages the county board minutes, okay, and we did it with carbon paper and to, because we had to send a copy to the press so they could typeset it and all that right. stuff. And, um, you know, when you think about the changes that technology has afforded for those kinds of things, elections, you know, things like that, the DNR, you know, now when I think about the cases and cases of paper licenses we dealt with, now it's a little roll of green tape, basically, that you punch in a computer, it prints it out, and you hand it to somebody. You know, so technology has really made the biggest difference. Change. And as you also reflect back, what do you, you know, are there some personal accomplishments or collective accomplishments that, you know, you're particularly proud of or that you think back of and say, you know, I'm really glad we did that? Well, I think, you know, I was kind of in the right place at the right time because, I was able to really work through all these technology changes and really have an impact on how we do things, you know, setting up procedures and systems and, and, and things like that. I had a, a big hand in designing how our office is laid out in the new administration building, or it's not new anymore, it's 14 years old. But, um, and I, you know, and, and I'm kind of proud of how things operate and, and I had an opportunity to impact that. Um, I'm also really proud of our relationship with our municipal clerks. You know, um, I talk to county clerks in some other counties and it's like oil and water sometimes between the municipal clerks and the county. And so I'm really, I'm really proud and happy of the relationship we've developed with our municipal clerks. Yeah, and you've built a, a good staff. You have some employees working for you that have been with you for some time, have you not? Uh, yeah, our newest employee I think has been there for almost 10 years. So yeah, we, our staff is been there a while and they've, you know. And I think that reflects on you as well because obviously if they didn't care for who they worked <laughs> for or with, uh, they, they still wouldn't be there in all likelihood. So my compliments. Well, when Julie says that she's proud of making a difference and having the opportunity to, to help the county board streamline and new processes or the elections and working with our, uh, our clerks across the county and, and being proud of that relationship, which is I think really touching to hear. Um, People have taken notice 
Uh, Julie, and, and you may have read this in the newspaper, recently received the Wisconsin Counties Association Friend in County Government Award. This is a state award that's given to one individual in county government amongst all 72 counties, thousands of employees. One individual receives this award. And Julie this year received it, and, and Roger and I were honored to uh, be with her when she received the award in La Crosse at the Wisconsin Counties Association Conference. And, and for me, and I'd like to hear from you, it, it has to be pretty sweet to, to know that your years of service and the accomplishments and everything you've been a part of, that it's being recognized. Yeah, I was, I was really surprised to learn I was going to get that award and, and, and really honored, you know, because as you said, there's so many people in, in county government and certainly some I'm sure that are were more worthy than I am to receive that award. So I was really honored to, to be chosen for that. It, it was pretty nice. Well, you were very gracious as you accepted it and acknowledged clerks across the, the state for the good work they do. But this is not the first time we've received this award, believe it or not. It's the second consecutive year because Liz Mollick, who works in economic support in our Health and Human mm -hmm. Services Department, received it last year. So we are very proud. Uh, Sheboygan County is very proud of you, Julie, and thankful for your years of service. And you have, without question, made good things happen during your tenure, and we're going to miss you. Oh, thank you. I, I'm actually going to miss government as well. I've spent a lot of my life and time of my life here, and it, it is really hard for me to leave, but it's, yeah. it's time. Oh, but I, I really have to say, though, the county board, I think, in Sheboygan County makes those things possible. They allow department heads to, to manage and to do things, and I think that makes a huge difference in, you know, in our performance because Absolutely. we have the backing of the county board, Absolutely. which is tremendous. we got a good team in place. We do. Well, thank you for joining us today and providing a little snapshot on the important work of the county clerk's office. If you have more questions or would like more information, don't hesitate to contact Julie or a member of her staff. We have a county website where that information is available and certainly we're in the phone book. And by the way, our county website is going to be updated. I know Julie's office is going to be part of that, but we're going to have a whole new look with our website here soon. So on behalf of the county board and certainly Julie and her staff, thank you for joining us today next month. Well, what are we having here next month, Roger? I've got to take a look at this. Next month, Rochelle Valeski, our new administrator at Rocky Knoll, is going to be joining us. New name, new person, Rochelle Valeski. She's been with us just over a month, and we're looking forward to having her join us and, and telling you about the good things happening at our Rocky Knoll Healthcare Center. So again, until then, thanks for joining us.